Pricing items in Path of Exile can be a bit tricky, especially for new players, since you rely on rare items with random roll properties more than unique items. For instance, in World of Warcraft or Diablo or games like that, you can often just look at what other players have on and go for a specific name and actually just get that item. And it doesn't really work that way in Path of Exile since uniques are a bit different compared to other games. Um, so, and this might even also, so pricing items might also depend on uh, what league you're playing in uh, or how long the league has been going. Therefore, I'm going to make this um, pricing guide on rare items purely, and I am going to base it on standard prices since I believe that is the only league where it makes remotely sense to talk about having stable prices, um, while also being a league where people might actually benefit from a guide like this. Uh, as I expect, people in hardcore might have a bit more knowledge about the game in general. How to evaluate helmets. So helmets come in six different variations when we talk about their base defensive stats. So armor, evasion, and energy shield. And we have armor evasion, armor energy shield, and evasion energy shield. I will focus on uh, three types, and that will be armor, evasion, and energy shield only, so not the hybrid types. Um, starting with the armor-based helmets, uh, you might want to observe other builds. So to get a feel for what people actually want, you might want to go to uh, the official PUE forum and check out the, the thread where you can see uh, builds and classes. So if you go to that place, you can see a lot of different builds and what stats people want in their specific uh, slots. Um, this is a very good way to get a feel for what people want and that is basically what I would advise you to do if you're a total beginner. Um, if not, then you might already have played a few builds, you might know a few builds and then based on that information you can uh, made a, make a better educated guess on what the price should be on a specific item. Uh, I'm going to start by, since this is armor-based helmets, I'm going to start by looking at the Marauder class, since I think the Marauder class is the pure uh, armor class in the game. A pure armor-based helmet with 75 plus maximum life and two elemental resistances adding up to 50 plus in standard at this point sells for one KSO. Um, if we change that, so we have 75 plus to maximum life and three elemental resistances adding up to 50, um, then you sell it for five KSOs. And that is a significant difference. But a thing that's worth keeping in mind here is that is there a counterpart, a unique counterpart to what I am trying to sell here? So in this case, we have helmets. And Abyssus, Alpha's Howl, Ratnets, Bringer of Rain, Devotus Devotion, and Heretic's Veil are some of the unique items that might see some play in this slot. And the combinations are not just pure armor here, because when you're talking about uniques, people want the effect the unique brings more than just uh, this, this, the raw stats on there. So um, it's a bit different from rare items, and that's why I will not do a guide on that specifically. Um, so if we look at Alpha's Howl, and you can use Alpha's Howl from uh, level 64 and onwards, and right now it costs three chaos in standard. So if that is your endgame helmet, why would you at this point buy a rare helmet for one to five chaos? It doesn't really make too much sense. If we look at the ascendancies the Marauder can be, since ascendancies nowadays dictate quite a bit how the builds play, um, the Juggernaut is heavily focused on armor increases, life regeneration, damage reduction, and avoiding crowd control, while the Berserker has a focus on dealing more damage while also taking more in return, leeching effects, and effects that are very situation dependent. The Chieftain is quite different from the two others, uh, with a focus on burning effects and fire damage. It also focus on totems, uh, which doesn't really seem to appeal that much to uh, in-your-face kind of combat like the two other ascendancies. Now looking at builds that these ascendancies fit into, I think that Juggernaut might be better suited for hardcore playstyle because it is extremely defensive and 
players in South Court tend to like squishier and more fast-paced characters. Um, but I will still talk a bit about it. So um, I believe that any piece of armor, if you're a life-based character, needs to have um, 75 plus uh, life on it. And you might want to have some resistances. And in this case, I will say at least two elemental resistances adding up to um, 50 a total resistance is somewhat desirable. Um, if it doesn't have these stats, I would not consider it worth anything, except in two situations where it might be a bit different. So if you have a helmet with plus two level to minion gems, or very high item rarity, uh, that might change the situation a little bit, but in an ideal world, I think a pure armor-based helmet has um, plus two armor, and plus two increased percentage-based armor, and plus two maximum life, plus two cold, fire, and lightning resistance, and with the highest possible rolls, uh, I believe this is a perfect helmet. Juggernaut, Berserker, and Chieftain, it doesn't really matter too much what kind of build you want to make. Uh, you want to cap your resistance and have a decently high life pool to play around with. And then there can be some situations where it might be completely different from specific item slots, like summoners might want plus two in their helmets to minion gems, um, or you might want plus two to our gems in your helmet, like, uh, for instance, um, Elf's Hall can give you. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind, but in general, you just want to cap your resistance and uh, get your life up as high as possible, since your links in your items and uh, the specific skill gems you have as they level up will carry you through the game if you have a decent passive tree. 